Hello and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Ms. Granados and today we're going to be learning about the relationship between fractions and decimals so that we can recognize equivalent values. At the end of the lesson, you will know you've met today's learning intention if you are able to meet the following success criteria. I can describe the relationship of the whole and its parts in the situation. I can use models and or mathematical language to prove that two values are equivalent or not equivalent. I can take one form of a number and represent it in other forms, like fraction to decimal. You will need some paper and something to write with, so go ahead and gather your supplies and come right back. will help our brains get warmed up and think about what we already know about fractions. Look at this image. What fraction is yellow? At first, I focused on the trapezoids and said to myself, okay, two trapezoids will fit on one hexagon. But then I had to think about the blue rhombus. So I decided to scratch that idea and think about the number of rhombi that would fit on the yellow hexagon. So three rhombi fit on one hexagon and I know that two trapezoids fit on one hexagon, so three rhombi must also fit on two trapezoids. So I know that there are a total of seven rhombi. So what fraction is yellow? Well, three rhombi that fit on the yellow hexagon out of the total of the seven rhombi that fit on this total image gives us three sevenths. So three sevenths of the pattern blocks image is yellow. There are many correct answers to this activity. Mathematicians communicate their thinking, so be ready to explain or justify your answer. Practice is being a communicator by saying your ideas out loud. I'll give you one minute to think of your answer or answers to the fraction of the square that is shaded. So the first way I thought about it was to look at the square as broken up into four sections, or four squares. Since my whole is the entire square, the blue represents one square out of four squares altogether, or one fourth. So one fourth is shaded. Did this thinking match your thinking? Another way to think about it is by breaking up the four squares in half with a diagonal, 
like this. Now I can see that I have eight triangles within the entire square. How many of those triangles are blue? Two eighths are shaded blue. Does this thinking match your thinking? What we just showed on the last two explanations are examples of equivalencies. When something is equivalent, we mean that the values are the same, but that the representation may look different. One fourth is equivalent to two eighths. What is another way that we could break up this square to name an additional equivalent fraction to one fourth and two eighths? and use the pre-drawn line to cut across that diagonal, like so. And I'll do that with the other three squares. These extra diagonals create 16 equal size triangles within the entire square. So what fraction is shaded? four sixteenths of the square is shaded blue. Did this thinking match your thinking? One fourth is the same as two eighths, which is the same as four sixteenths. So what we have proved is that one fourth, two eighths, and four sixteenths are equivalent. I can think of one more way to look at this image. This 10 by 10 grid that has 100 total small squares on it can be cut up into four sections like this. If I take out the blue shaded region, then I can see that I have a section of five by five green squares, which totals 25 small squares. So this fractional amount is 25 hundredths. And because the denominator is 100, I can easily write this fractional amount in decimal form. Did this thinking match your thinking? What we've proved is that 1 fourth, 2 eighths, 4 sixteenths, and 25 hundredths are all equivalent because the denominator is 100 in the number 25 hundredths that means we can easily write the decimal for the fraction but this also means that 1 fourth is equal to 25 hundredths 2 eighths is equal to 25 hundredths 4 sixteenths is equal to 25 hundredths that's why I love fractions, because you can represent the same value so many different ways. What about this image? If you would like, you can draw this image on your paper to help you think of the fraction that is shaded in this square. Remember, mathematicians communicate their thinking, so be ready to explain or justify your answer. Practice being a communicator by saying your ideas out loud. I'll give you about one minute to think of your answer or answers to the fraction of the square that is shaded.
look at how Mimi solved this problem. First, Mimi used the small unit square at the bottom left, and then she looked at the square that's surrounding it. She made a connection to the fourths that we looked at in the previous question. And then she broke up the red square with the dashed red lines into fourths. How many squares do we have now? That's correct, we have 16 squares within the total square. So how many of the 16 squares are shaded blue? Yes, 3 16 of the square is shaded blue. Is this how you thought of your answer? Now we're going to look at how another student thought of their answer. Andrea began by cutting the entire square in half. Then she looked at the long vertical section to the left of the yellow half mark, and it made her think of cutting the square into fourths vertically. She thought to herself that she still needed to know what this white piece was. So she decided to then break the square into horizontal lines. Now she's able to see that the 16 squares and the 3 16 that are shaded blue. Is this the way you thought of your answer? Let's look at Mimi and Andrea's thinking. What's the same and what's different? I noticed that they both partitioned the large square into fourths. Mimi partitioned her square into quadrants by mentally drawing two lines forming a cross with four squares. Andrea partitioned her square by mentally drawing three lines vertically into fourths. They both then broke up their squares into smaller partitions of sixteenths and then counted how many of those sixteenths were shaded blue. They both arrived at the same fraction of three sixteenths. So let's reflect. Today we focused on parts of holes. Whether our hole was a square cut up into smaller parts or our hole was a set of pattern blocks. We also used models to prove that two values are equivalent. These values in our models were represented with fractions and sometimes with decimal equivalents. Now that we've reviewed what we focused on in this lesson, write down something that you learned today. Maybe it's something that you learned with visualizing the fractional parts of a square. Or maybe it was something you learned about yourself as a communicator. Is there anything you're still wondering? Maybe a question about finding an equivalent decimal for a specific fraction. If so, write that down. Each of the success criteria for today, use the number line to reflect on where you are in your understanding. If you feel like you understand the success criteria, then you'll rate yourself on the number line towards the right arrow. If you feel like you're kinda, you kind of got it, then you might be somewhere in the middle of the number line. And if you feel like you still need time to practice one of the success criteria, then you'll probably be closer to the left arrow on the number line. I can describe the relationship of the whole and its parts in the situation. I can use models and or mathematical language to prove that two values are equivalent or not equivalent. I can take one form of a number and represent it in other forms, fraction to decimal and decimal to fraction. In today's episode of Math Matters, we learned about the relationship between fractions and decimals.
remember, if you still have a question about today's learning, you can email your teacher, ask a friend, or a family member. For Math Matters, I'm Ms. Granados, and I hope you have a mathematical day and keep on counting.